Alright, my name is Kainton the Genius, and today we'll be continuing with tutorial 5 on our Spring Boot uh, uh, tutorial for 2019. And this is what we are going to cover. We are going to cover adding REST controller to our Spring Boot application. So, these are the steps. So, let me just try the, the topic. We are going to add a REST controller. So what does it mean? A REST controller actually makes our application to be able to respond to uh, REST API calls from the browser or from HTTP. Before now, in tutorial 4, we run this application as a local application and it was able to print out something on the console. But today we are going to make it respond to the web, a, a, a call from the browser. So if a user actually goes to the browser, uh, the user goes to the browser and enters something in the HTTP uh, localhost from here at a certain port. At a certain port, then it's going to go to our application and actually run certain code and give a response. So that is what we are going to do, adding a REST controller to our application. This is very interesting because this makes your application a full fledged web application that you are ready to deploy. So these are the six types you are going to follow. These are six types, but actually it can take less than five minutes to be able to do it. So it's a very simple steps out there that we are going to follow right now. I'd actually like to remind you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below this video so that you get notified when I make new lessons and you kind of encourage me and motivate me to be making this lesson because I actually want to build or to make uh, to develop many programmers this year 2019 so that is my focus so just click on subscribe button subscribe and then uh, leave a comment like the video if, if it's been informative for you so let me keep this one here so the first thing we are going to do we are going to continue from where we stopped we created two application two applications that are the same the first one we use spring initializer to build this application from the Spring online website. And we also built a local application using Spring tool suite. So let's just choose one of them at random. Let's use the first app. I think this first app was the first one we built. So this application, I'm going to open it. So now it's open. So what I'm going to do is to open the main file. So if you go to SRC main, and then open this so you can see this file. So this is where we left off. If I right click on this application and simply say runners and choose Java application, it's going to run, just say okay. And it's going to display welcome to Spring Boot tutorials as you can see here in this console. But this is not what we want. We want it to respond to UR, to a HTTP request from the browser. So, Let's follow the steps we have here. First, add a web, start a web dependency. So if you open your pom.xml, you're actually going to be working with this pom.xml every time because this is where you are going to be adding dependencies. So here we have two dependencies, the spring uh, starter and the spring boot starter test. So now we need to add two more dependencies and one of them is starter web de dependency. I already told you how to get dependencies. Let me just, I like using Chrome, so let me use Chrome. So go to the Maven repository. You can get dependencies, any dependency you want, you can find it in Maven uh, repository. So mvnrepository.com, repo central, and you come here. So the first dependency we want to add is the starter web dependency. So just say uh, spring, spring boot starter web. So that is what we want. Starter web will make our application a web application instead of a local application. So we have Spring Boot Starter web. So let's go here and let's take, uh, let's say release, uh, depending on the release that is current when you are setting this tutorial. So you can see Spring Boot Starter web. So let's take it and put it in our pom.xml. So we've added the starter web dependency. The next dependency we want to add is the, let's check where we are, the starter MVC. Now, what is the starter MVC? 
the SATA MVC is a repository that makes our application an MVC app application. Remember, an MVC is an application that have three layers. The view, which represents the web pages that the user assigns, the controller, which contains your logic, and the model, which contains like your data. All right, so for this application to follow the, the MVC uh, uh, design pattern or architecture, we need the Stata MVC. And in that, play, in that case, we can make REST calls, REST API calls to our application. So let's say, let's look for a Stata MVC. Let's just say Spring Stata MVC. So one thing that helps you is learn how to use Stata Web. So let's just look for, uh, this is Spring Web MVC. So I think that is what we need. So let's go and click on it. One thing that will help you is learn how to use, uh, you can see, Spring Web MVC. Yeah, that is it. Spring Web MVC, not Stata MVC. So copy it and put it in your form.xml. If you learn how to use uh, the dependencies, that is, learn the functions of different dependencies, you'll be able to make your application work very well because these dependencies have been built for you for free. And the next thing we want to do is to save our project. So if we save, you can see the building workspace and getting the dependencies into our project. All right, the next step is to create a simple class, a Java file that will contain the function that is going to run when a user makes a REST call to our application. So what function do we like to run when a user makes a call to our application? We can actually um, run this function here, this main function, but it's, going, it's better to separate a REST controller from this main class. So let's just add a file. Let's call it home or home controller. So create a class and call it home controller. All right. So this home controller will contain the function that is going to be called when a user visits HTTP and types in certain URL and is going to come to this controller. Now, we, go, we are going to tell Spring Boot that this home controller file we created is the landing point of any user that goes to HTTP on the browser and types in a certain URL. We are telling Spring Boot that come to the home controller and look for a function to execute. And to do that, we are going to use an annotation called at rest controller. So let's just yes, let's just write it at rest controller. I that is that is a uh, step four. So annotate this class with at rest controller. All right. So we just import you fix it by importing. So it's available in this and these are uh, wipe the bind stuff. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is to write a method we want to run. So let's write a method that simply returns maybe hello or uh, returns a string uh, to the user. So let's call this uh, function welcome. Let's just call it welcome. So uh, public string is going to return a string, public static string. Welcome. All right. So... This function, let it just return uh, welcome to Spring Boot. I want to break it into two lines and I'm going to remind you to subscribe. Remember to subscribe. Subscribe and leave a comment. Okay, fine. All right. So permit me to just put a new line character here. All right. So this is the function that is going to execute when a user calls a URL. But what URL will lead to this place? What URL is going to lead to this place? That makes it necessary for us to add another mapping, the last mapping called the request mapping. So we are going to put this request mapping against the particular function we want to execute. Now say at requests mapping and we say value equals and we specify 
uh, we specify the URL mapping. So when the user visits a browser and visits our application, or just visit localhost and enter slash, right? It's going to lead to this function and execute this function. So meanwhile, let's correct this. Right? So let me save. So hopefully you have this right now. You can pause this video, copy this, because this is what we are going to use almost every time when we're even making this application to be a bit complex. This is what we are going to use. Also visit my website, www kintonthegenius.com slash springboot to get this procedure easily. So now we are done with everything. We are done with all this. So let's run this application as a web application and then we go to the browser to assess, uh, to enter this URL, just slash, only slash, and let's see that it's going to run this code. So to run this application, just right click and say run as, you can actually run as a uh, Java application or Spring uh, Spring Boot app. So let's just run a Java application and just say OK. So one thing I want to let you know is, yeah, I want to let you take note of what is happening here. So you can see <coughs> it's running this one, which is OK, but that is not what we are interested in. I want you to take note of this line that says Tomcat started on port 8080 with context parts. And we also see started the first application in 4.936. So the focus is Tomcat started. It means that this application started running, deployed to a Tomcat server, and now it's available via HTTP request. So let's go and try it and see how it works. So let's just go HTTP uh, slash local host. And say OK. All right, so at this point, it's running, it shows I Internet Information Services OK, but we need to assess our application. So first, we go to port 8080 and then slash port 8080 and assess slash. So you can see, uh, welcome to Spring Boot. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment. So basically, We've created a full fledged web application. So imagine that you decorated this page with uh, CSS. It, it means you've built a full fledged web application that is running that can be accessed via HTTP. I'm going to stop here and we'll continue in the next tutorial. I would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel right now by clicking on the subscribe button below and also share, like, and leave a comment for me below. Thank you.